Hello, and welcome to WJCC Benefits Orientation. I'm Lori Ann Smith, your Benefits Coordinator. Thanks for all who are joining us. And the first thing we're going to do today is go through the packet. Hopefully you have received your packet. If you have not received your packet, please contact me via email. My email is Lorianne, L-O-R-I-A-N-N-E dot Smith at wjccschools.org or send me, um, call me at 603-6410 and we'll make sure we get one in the pony mail to you. So this present benefits presentation um, usually is about two hours long. We're gonna see if we can cut that a little bit today. Um, there's a lot of information we're gonna cover. We're gonna talk about some basic information and then we're gonna go into leave followed by um, health insurance information and then the Virginia retirement system. But before any of that, of course, we're gonna start with the packet. If you have your packet, on the left side, you have some papers. The first one is a memo, and it is, the subject is health slash dental insurance enrollment eligibility. Basically, it's telling you that you have 30 days from your date of hire to enroll in health insurance or dental. Um, your date of hire is whatever date is on your contract. So make sure you're aware of what, where your 30 days are, okay? So 30 days for um, to sign in to, so we enroll in health insurance or dental. So I need that back, sign and bring that back. Also on the bottom of that, it says to tell me whether or not you attended your live benefit session as this one is or reviewed a recorded session, okay? The second thing on the left side is this memo and it's about um, general notice for extended or COBRA coverage. This is your COBRA rights information. The only thing I need back from here is the second page that says that you have received those rights. You don't have to read them right away, although I do encourage you to read them at some point because they are your COBRA rights. The next thing we have on this side is the Sick Leave Bank. And I'm gonna talk about Sick Leave Bank and becoming a member of Sick Leave Bank and what that is, but the form is on that left side, followed by leaves and absences. So I'm gonna talk about leave. However, I don't expect you to remember everything I say. So in your packet is this kind of quick reference guide about um, all of the leave. And finally, on that side is the monthly pay schedule. We are paid on or about the 25th of the month each month. Um, and so you will get an email from payroll indicating that your stub is ready to be reviewed. Um, the passcode for that will be the last four digits of your social security number. But that's everything on the left side of the packet. You also have an envelope. The envelope is says the local choice up in the corner. We're going to go over that last. Okay, so put that aside. On the right side of your packet, you should see my card stapled there. So if you need to get in touch with me, if you didn't remember the email and, and phone number I just gave you, you should have a card there. The first thing in there is the health insurance rate sheet. So the rates for all of the coverages that we offer on the front side and the back side are the rates for the dental. So when I get to the, to the information about health insurance, you'll see that the health insurance includes dental, but we also have a standalone dental should you not need health insurance and want dental coverage only. The next two documents in, on the right side are health insurance plan comparisons. They're two different colors. One's blue, one's purple, or yours may be different colors. So you want to look at those. You can compare the coverages side by side so that you can determine which coverage is best for you and your family. Next would be the dental forms. So if you choose the standalone dental coverage, then you would complete the dental form. And then there's the benefits summary form for that dental coverage. And I will be reviewing that in the presentation. We also have the flexible benefits packet information should you choose to enroll in that. And then for our VRS members, um, if you're part-time and you're watching this, if you're uh, contracted to work less than 30 hours, then you're not um, eligible for the Virginia retirement system. Only persons who are contracted to work 30 or more hours are participants in the VRS system. So the rest of this packet information refers references um, the VRS until I go back to the envelope, okay? So we have group life, um, excuse me, long-term care information. You'll hear me talk about that a little bit later. You have term life insurance through VRS, and this is your term life certificate. You wanna put that away to a safe place. You also have the option to purchase additional life insurance. WJCC pays for insurance on your life insurance on your behalf, but you have the option to purchase additional life insurance, and that's what this booklet is about. 
It says secure in at the top and it says protect your family's financial future. And that's about the optional life that you can purchase in addition to what you already have. For my VRS hybrid members, and you'll hear more about that when we get to the VRS portion of the presentation, you have two highlights for short-term and long-term disability. Um, you wanna put those away so that if you're ever ill and you need to be out, you can reference those, although I can provide them to you again later. The final two documents in the packet are designation of beneficiary forms. This first one, everybody who is a VRS um, member will complete this form, all portions. Only hybrid members will complete this form. It says DCP at the top. Only hybrid members will complete that form, okay? So that's on what's on the right side of the packet. Now, the envelope, the TLC envelope that I mentioned earlier, this contains also information about the health insurance. So over that, in that envelope, you have this, the enrollment form. This is very important. I need this enrollment form back from you, whether you're taking health insurance or not, because if you're not taking health insurance, that means you're gonna waive coverage and we need to know that. So you have that in the packet. I'm gonna review that during the presentation. You also have the three benefit summaries for the three coverages that we offer. Whichever coverage you choose, should you choose a coverage, um, you wanna hold on to that to that benefits summary booklet. Other information in the packet is sort of FYI or that was in that envelope. Um, and you can look at that at your convenience. So that's the information that's in your WJCC benefits packet. Again, if you did not receive one, please contact me either via email or give me a call and we will put one in the pony mail to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and go to the PowerPoint presentation um, at this time. Where is it? There it is. Catherine, will you let me know if you can see my screen? I, I can. Okay, thank you. So let's start from the beginning. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the benefits, um, this benefits orientation overview, it's about normally about two hours. We're going to try to get through it in an hour and a little bit um, and see if, if we have any questions as we go through. So first of all, all of our policies and procedures um, are online. Um, go to www.wjccschools.org click on the school board and then board docs and you'll be able to access the policies. You will see several policy references throughout this presentation. They'll be listed at the bottom of each screen. For example, the bottom of this one. So WJCC is an equal opportunity employer and this is our, our, our EEO statement. The board is an equal opportunity employer and will not discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, age, disability, or any other basis prohibited by law in employing, assigning, promoting, dismissing, and paying its employees. Um, employment will be based upon qualifications and the ability of the person to perform effectively in a specific assignment. And that is our official EEO statement. Another policy um, regarding gifts and solicitations so the board does have a policy that discourages the exchange of gifts between staff and students. Um, all of us have probably worked in school divisions at some point, and you know, especially if you work with the babies, the uh, elementary age students, they're making pictures for you or, or something. Um, I still have a coaster that a student made for me, and that was in, when I was teaching high school. And so it's the sweetest thing. However, if you do, if you have a class of students and you're giving students gifts, or if you're a driver and you are giving um, gifts, during winter for winter break to students. You wanna be um, fair and make sure every student um, receives something um, and you wanna be careful about that, okay? So also there shall um, be no solicitation of goods and services for personal use or for student use during school hours on school property. So be aware of that if you have a food truck, that's a side business for you and you don't wanna pull up to school at lunchtime and you know make your wares available, that would be against uh, school policy. So we also have, make sure I didn't skip one there. Make sure, yeah, make sure I didn't skip a screen. Um, division crisis information. So for your particular building, you wanna know what you need to do in the, uh, in the instance of a crisis. If, if there is a fire drill, where do you take your students? If there is a lockdown, what do you do? 
Um, so you wanna know what the policies and procedures are for those types of situations. If you're a driver and you pull up to a school and the, they're in a lockdown mode or they're having a fire drill, what do you do with the students? Um, you need to know about that. If you are a cafeteria worker and there is a fire drill, do you exit the building? Are you expected to exit the building? If there are children in the cafeteria, are you supposed to take them with you? And if so, where? So you wanna know all those types of information for your particular location. We also have an inclement weather policy. So in the case of inclement weather and we have to close schools or close schools early or open schools late, you will receive a robocall. So please be sure that your, the information we have on file for you is accurate so that we can call you. Of course, information will be available on TV, radio stations, school division website, and other social media platforms. Um, you may hear something like um, essential personnel report. Well, if you're not sure if you're essential personnel, you wanna make sure you reach out to your supervisor and find out, okay? We have a smoking policy. Um, there ought to be no tobacco products on, in, on school property at any time. That's the, that's the gist of that policy. That includes employees, students, staff, anyone visiting the school, citizens in the community. If you're on school property or school building or on a school bus, no tobacco products. Tobacco products are prohibited. We also have a sexual harassment and sexual violence policy. Um, sexual harassment or violence may include, but is not limited to, unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, other physical or verbal conduct or communications of a sexual nature, and any other gender-based harassment. The school division will investigate all complaints. If you experience sexual harassment or if you think you have witnessed it, please report it to your supervisor, to human resources, um, or to the senior director of student services. And you may not know who that is, but you do know who your supervisor is. Please report it, or as I mentioned, contact HR. It is our job to investigate. It is your job to report. Likewise, under Title IX, uh, those of you who've been in education before, you know that we are required to report anything, any type of abuse that we, we believe is occurring with our students. Everybody is now um, a required reporter. So if you, um, no matter what your position is, custodial, bus driver, cafeteria worker, teacher, classroom teacher, administrator, central office staff, if you believe that there's something going on with a child, you need to report it immediately. You're required by law. Going back to the Safe Schools training, um, we do offer secure training online. It's through a company called Safe Schools. Some of you may be familiar with that. You will get a, an email from Safe Schools on behalf of Williamsburg James City Schools, listing the videos that you need to watch. Um, in particular, the one about sexual harassment, there are three of them, um, staff to staff, student issues and responses, and staff to student. You can see there on the screen about how long each one of those are. They each end with a quiz that you will be required to take, um, and you need to get at least 80%. So we are required to do the sexual harassment um, videos every year, just as we are required to do bloodborne pathogens every year. There's also one on um, uh, the EpiPen uh, for allergic reactions and how to do that with students. And there's several others. And there may be Safe Schools videos specific to your particular assignment. For example, if you are a special ed TA, you may have specific videos that you need to watch for that. Or if you're custodial staff, you may have specific videos related to chemicals and cleaning and so on, so on that you need to watch. When the, video, when the email comes to you and it will come to your school email, not your personal email, it will come to your school email. Everyone is assigned a school email. You need to go ahead and do that. And of course we have to re, um, renew each year. I have mine waiting in my inbox now to renew for blood point pathogens and sexual harassment along with a couple of others. It will tell you how many days you have to get it done. And if you don't get it done within the time frame, um, our senior director, Tim Baker, will be notified. And, um, and then he will reach out to you and ask you to get it done. So please be aware when you receive the email in your, in your email box, in your inbox, how much time you have to get those safe schools trainings done. 
grievance procedures. So the school board does have grievance procedures in place for instructional and support staff. There are specific rules, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, the particular policy that it relates to is there. Just please know with grievance procedures and complaints, there's a timeline involved. So if you have one, you wanna go ahead and make sure you read that policy. Um, again, they're online at www.wjccschools.org. Go to school board and then board docs, and click on policies and you're gonna be looking for policy under G, on the letter G, okay? No weapons on school properties. Per Virginia code, no weapons on school property except in the situation specifically outlined in the code and there are specific persons who can have weapons on school property, they, they are outlined in the code. Um, it could, the, a violation could be a class one misdeme misdemeanor or a class six felony. So you wanna be careful. Um, we live in an area which is near some rural areas and we have some hunters in our community. And if you are a hunter, um, please make sure that you remember to take your weapon out of your vehicle before you roll up on work the next day, okay? Employee self-service. So employees can access um, their personal information through employee self-service. Again, you go to the website as, as listed there, www.wjccschools.org. Select employee at the top of your screen um, and then go to employee self-service. Um, and then in, in employee self-service, you can change your address, you can change your phone number, you can change your tax withholdings. Um, the a username is this, your six digit ID number. If you don't remember what that is, your six digit ID number is listed on the back of your uh, badge. So if you have your badge, um, then it's on the back of that. It starts with one zero and then your password as the last four digits of your social security number. And of course you can change that um, once you get in. If you have issues accessing um, ESS, please contact IT. Tech Connect. They will be able to help you. Unfortunately, I will not be able to reset your password. I can't help you there. And do keep in mind whenever you do access employee self-service that you be sure to log off at the end so that no one else can come behind you and access your information. Before I move on, um, I have one person on with me live. So I'm going to ask, do you have any questions, Ms. Burr? No, ma'am. Not so far. Okay. Thank you. So this time we're going to move on and talk about leave. Um, and again, in your packet, there is that um, quick reference guide for leave. So I'm going to go over the information and then again, it'll be there for you if you don't remember what I shared with you today. Give me one second and move this up. Okay. So sick leave. So all employees um, receive accrued sick leave except for short term temps. And your sick leave is based on your contracted months and hours. So if you're contracted to work 10 months or seven and a half hours a day, you get 10 seven and a half hour days. If you're contracted to work um, 12 months for eight hours a day, you get 12 eight hour days of sick leave, okay? Personal leave. So what the board has done is five of your sick leave days are considered personal leave days. So my 10 month, 11 month employees, you do not have annual leave. So if you need to be off from work for something that's not necessarily related to sick leave um, and you need to take a personal day, then you can take personal leave. You can take three consecutive personal days, not five, although you have five available to you. Personal days do not carry forward. Um, I did not say this, but sick leave is unlimited. You can carry a, as much sick leave as you can carry. However, personal leave does not carry forward. So you get to the end of the contract year, you have not used your personal leave. It goes back into being sick leave and it accumulates a sick leave. And then your new contract, you get more days, five of which will be personal leave days. Your annual, your annual vacation. So annual and vacation leave was for 12 month um, or yeah, permanent employees, 12 month employees only. Um, you get annual leave and that's gonna be based on for full-time people, how long you have been in the Virginia retirement system, okay? You cannot carry more than 35 vacation slash annual leave days. So if you get to June 30th and you have more than 35, then you will lose those days. So you wanna make sure that you're taking your time and not losing it, okay? We also get bereavement leave. You get up to three days of paid bereavement leave for each um, event of death for an immediate family member. And for this purposes, an immediate family member is a spouse, a child, parent of the employee, grandparent of the employee, sibling, um, 
and I think these, I think it may be in-laws, it's six altogether, but there's a policy. And if you're not sure, you can always call me and I can look it up for you. But you do get three bereavement leave, uh, bereavement days per event. And it does not count against your sick leave, your personal leave, or your annual leave. And of course, there's professional leave if, uh, for staff who need to go for any type of seminar or conference. And that leave is approved both by your supervisor and at the central office level. Speaking of leave, the Federal uh, Family Medical Leave Act, and known as FMLA, many of you are probably familiar with it, to be eligible for FMLA, you must have worked with the school division for 12 months. So if you are brand new, you've never worked here before, um, you have to have worked here for 12 months. If you've worked here before and you've come back, if you worked for 12 months prior and it's been and you've returned and it's been less than 10 years, then you don't have to satisfy that 12 months again. Okay. But the second part of that criteria is you also have to have worked 1,250 hours. So 1,250 hours. Um, if it's somebody's close, I will double check on that just to make sure that you're eligible. So the two criteria, you have to have been with WJCC for 12 months and you have to have worked from 12 for 1,250 hours from the date that you asked for the FMLA back 12 months. FMLA is job protected unpaid leave. It offers employees up to 12 weeks um, of leave of the unpaid job protected leave for birth of a child, placement of a child, for adoption of a child for foster care, or for your own serious health condition or for the serious health condition of your child or spouse or your parent, or for military exigency. Uh, for service family members, you can, if you have to take care of a service member who's been injured or is hurt uh, in the line of duty, then you can get up to 26 weeks. Remember, it is unpaid leave. School board policy, however, requires that any leave you have accrued must run concurrently with FMLA. So you don't get FMLA and then you take your leave or then take your leave and get FMLA. They run together. And if for by chance that you have run out of leave, out of paid leave, but your FMLA entitlement is still in place, then you will be on leave without pay at that point. Okay. It's a little more complicated for my hybrid members because you do also have um, a short-term disability for which you have to have been a member, have to have been with your current employee for 12 months as well to have access to that. So it kind of runs hand in hand there. For FMLA, there are two forms, an FMLA request form and a doctor certification form. We need both of those. Um, most of you are working, if you're working in a school building, um, you can get it from the front office senior admin or your supervisor um, if you're not at a school building, or you can email me and I will forward the forms to you. I need to have the medical certification in order to approve your leave. So just because you sent me a request form does not mean your leave is automatically approved. Until I receive that medical certification, I cannot approve the FMLA. So I want, you, you need to make sure we get that. Leave without pay. So for our employees who are brand new and have not worked with us for 12 months, the board has a policy called the leave without pay policy. So if you have a debil debilitating or life-threatening illness or injury and you're not eligible for FMLA, you can request to activate this policy. You can take up to um, 30 days of unpaid leave during your first year of employment. You must first exhaust any leave you have. You cannot take it in, in take this 30 day leave in increments like a half day here, a half day there. It has to be consecutive and you cannot use it for anybody other than yourself. So this, this leave without pay policy references employees only, unlike FMLA, which could, which could be for a family member, excuse me, a, a child, a parent or a spouse or yourself. Before we move on from leave, um, I just want to make sure Catherine's still with me, Ms. Burr, and if there are any questions, anything I didn't cover that you think might, someone might have a question about? I don't think so. It's all pretty straightforward. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to go on to health insurance and dental. So we do offer a health insurance plan and a standalone dental plan. Starting with the health insurance, it's, the health insurance is through Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and eligible participants include all full-time employees and part-time employees who are contracted to work at least four hours a day, 20 hours a week. So if you're working at least 20 hours a week or you're contracted to work at least 20 hours a week, you are eligible to participate in the health insurance. Your eligible dependents include your spouse and your children up to age 26. So your children, your 26 year old can stay on your coverage until the end of the year, 
during which he and she turns 26. So if your child turns 26 in February, they can stay on your WJCC health insurance coverage until December 31st of that year. That's different than most employers. So we actually have that extended. And as I mentioned, a spouse cannot be a live-in domestic partner. It must be a spouse and you could be required to produce a marriage license. Your health insurance coverage will become effective the first of the month following your hire date. So if you're hired on October 28th, your, your insurance will become effective November 1. If you're hired on November 2nd, your insurance will become effective December 1. So if as long as you're hired, uh, if you're hired on November 1 and that's the first and that's a weekday, your, your coverage can be effective November 1. Um, please know that you are subject to a double payroll deduction. That's important to note. Um, our payroll cutoff for um, payroll to enter information is usually the 12th of the month. That's pretty close to the front first of the month. So you're likely to get hit with a double deduction because we pay for our health insurance a month in advance. So deduction, and I have insurance here. So my deduction that comes out of my check for November is paying for, for my December coverage. So that month of that. So if you come in and your start date is November, is, is October 28th, your coverage will be effective November 1. Out of your November pay, there will be a double deduction to cover for November and December. So just wanna make sure you're aware of that. I try to remind people of that when they send in the paperwork so there are no surprises during that first paycheck. And that double deduction only happens that one time, okay? If, you, um, if both you and your spouse work for WJCC, when, we look at, when you look at the um, health sure insurance rate sheet, you will see a DS. There's a little bit of a discount if both of you all work for the school division. And one of you carry the coverage, then you get a little bit of a rate cut. Uh, so you have the dual spouse rate. So about the health insurance, as I mentioned, it is uh, administered by Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. It is through the local choice. The local choice is a state agency um, and we are part of that. It's a consortium of school divisions and municipalities under the local choice of uh, the umbrella. They bid for us, they get the, uh, they set the rates, they set the plans um, for us as well. We, they have five plans and we have chosen three to participate in. So the three plans are Key Advantage 250, Key Advantage 500 and the high deductible plan. Um, the local choice slash anthem, if you ever get a correspondence from me and it's TLC slash anthem, I'm referring to the local choice and not uh, the learning channel, okay? So it is the local choice. All of our health insurance plans are PPO plans. You know, PPO means you can go to whatever preferred provider you, you um, want to go to and you do not have to get a referral. All the plans include, include dental, prescription, vision, and employee assistance. So medical, dental, vision, prescription, employee assistance, all under one umbrella for one price. In your packet, I mentioned that you have two colored um, packets of information there that are the side-by-side -side comparisons of the plan. So this is what you would look, look at. It's also online on our website. So if you're gonna to try to consider which plan is for you and your family, you can see the deductible information there. You can see the out-of-pocket maximum, the annual out-of-pocket maximum, your potential co-pays, um, and what it would cost for you, for example, if you had Key Advantage 250 and you went to the emergency room, you would be required to pay a $350 copay. Whereas if you had the Key Advantage 500 or the high deductible plan, you have to pay 20% after you met your deductible, 20% coinsurance. Coinsurance, unlike copay, coinsurance may be fluid because that means you pay portion and the health, the anthem or the health insurance company pays a portion. At that, you see it's 20%, you pay 20%, they pay 80%. Um, so you wanna be aware of that. If you're not familiar with a high deductible plan, what that means, and you can see that there, $2,800 for one person, 56 for a family, with a high deductible plan, you pay out of pocket the cost of a visit to your doctor, except for well visits, um, until you meet that deductible. And once you have met the deductible, then, is, it's the 2080 rule, okay? Just wanted to make sure you knew that. Prescription, so we have a tiered a situation with the prescription. Tier one is generic drugs. Tier two um, is a brand drug that, does, that uh, has a generic equivalent, but sometimes your doctor wants you to have the brand. T 
tier three is a brand drug that does not have a generic equivalent. And tier four is, is a, a specialty drug. If you notice, the high deductible health plan does not have that tier. So you have to pay for the cost of the medication until you have met, met your deductible, and then you pay 20% of the cost of that medication. We also have um, Ingenio RX, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, is the company that handles the uh, prescriptions. You can also get a 90-day supply of your prescription if you are on a medication that you will be on for the foreseeable future, like high blood pressure medication, thyroid medication, diabetes medication, and you're gonna be taking that regularly for the, for, for the foreseeable future. You can have your doctor to write the prescription in a 90-day supply, and you would save yourself one copay. Um, and it is delivered to your home. You don't have to go to the drugstore and stand in line, which is my favorite thing about it. The dental coverage, which is also included with your TLC slash Anthem pro, um, plan, you choose between the comprehensive plan and the preventive plan. So when you look at the um, a cost on the cost sheet, you will see, for example, two, a KA250 comprehensive. That's KA250 with comprehensive dental or KA250 with preventive dental. You can see the comprehensive obviously covers more. The preventive covers less. With the preventive, you get your cleanings twice a year and x-rays, and that's it. So if you have to have, I think I have somebody else I need to admit. Let's see. Um, or not. OK, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so if you have the preventive plan, you get those um, cleanings twice a year uh, with x-rays and, and nothing else. And anything else would occur out of your pocket. Whereas with the comprehensive, you do have um, some major dental that will be covered at, I believe, 50%, and you also have orthodontia. So you want to choose which dental plan you want. All right, so what is going on with this? If that's one, okay. There we go. Okay. So here's the choices. You want KA250, KA500 of the high deductible, high deductible plan with comprehensive dental, as seen on the right side, or do you want the 250, 500 or high deductible plan with the preventive dental? Obviously, those plans are going to cost a little bit less if they have preventive dental because you get less services with the dental plan. As I mentioned, the uh, NGNO RX is in charge of the, health, of the prescription plans. And again, you can have that home delivery with your 90 day supply of medication. The vision benefits, when you look at the plan uh, benefits summary, you will see that the coverages are exactly the same for all three plans, except for the copays. The copays are different for each plan, and you can see that in the benefits summary information. The employee assistance program, the employee assistance program is available to all employees, whether you take the health insurance or not. So the, the number is there, the website is there, it is confidential. Um, employees can reach out to the employee assistance program for uh, four free sessions of counseling for financial um, situation. If you had need, with help, need help with elder care or grief, for each issue you, that happens, you get four free sessions, not four free a year, but for each issue. And you can reach out to them and those services are free um, to, our, to our employees. Um, it's a part of your health insurance if you have the health insurance, but if you don't, you still can access it. Um, just, just a note there, everyone who is a new employee must complete the TLC enrollment form that's, that I'm going to go over in a little bit, okay? That's all with the health insurance. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the standalone dental. So remember, there's a dental plan with the health insurance. If you don't want the health insurance, but you do want dental, then you're going to still fill out the health insurance enrollment form waive the coverage, which I'm going to go over in just a minute, and when I get to the forms, and then you're going to fill out the dental um, enrollment form. If you're doing the health insurance, you do not have to fill out the dental form because remember it's already included. So your effective date for the standalone dental, it is a PPO plus premier um, plan, is the same as with the health insurance. It becomes effective the first of the month following your higher date, and you're subject to a double deduction. So speaking of the enrollment forms, here they are. The one on the left is the TLC, the local choice enrollment form, and the one on the right is the Delta Dental enrollment form. Remember, if you do the one on the right, excuse me, on the left, the TLC enrollment form and you waive coverage, but you want the dental, then you will complete the dental form. If you do the TLC enrollment form to have dental, to have um, health insurance, you do not have to fill out the form to um, uh, the, the dental form, okay? 
So let's go over the TLC form. So at this time, if you are watching the video and you want to stop the video to take out that form, I encourage you to do so. Um, and then I'm going to, because I'm going to go over each section and tell you what you need to fill out. So for part one, you're going to need to, everybody will fill out part one. You're going to put in your social, obviously your name, make sure to sign it and put in the date that you signed it, not your birth date. It's interesting that a lot of people will put in their date of birth there. So you want to make sure that you sign it the date that you sign the paper and then check whether you're full-time or part-time. In part two, for new hires, you're going to check box A and then write in your hire date, okay? Next page, part three, you're gonna fill in your um, name and address. Even if you're waiving coverage, we still need that information on file and TLC will key that information in. And this is where, um, if you're waiving coverage versus if you want coverage. So part four, if you're gonna waive coverage because you have coverage through TRICARE, you have coverage through your spouse, or you have coverage through somewhere else, then you wanna check that box and then list where you have coverage and who the coverage is the, who is the plan holder for that coverage. Or if you want coverage with WJCC, then you're gonna do part B or B. You're gonna select your option. Key, you see it say KA250 comprehensive, that's with comprehensive dental, KA250 uh, with preventive dental, uh, 500 comprehensive and preventive, a high deductible plan comprehensive and preventive. You see some other plans listed there. We do not offer those plans. So we do not offer expanded, we do not offer the 1000 and we do not offer the Kaiser HMO. You're gonna fill in on that box there under important. It tells you what codes to use. And then you're gonna put everybody who's gonna be covered on your plan, including yourself, okay? So either you're gonna do part A or part B in number four, and then that's all you have to do. You will not do C and you will not do part um, the part five. That's for me to fill out. For the dental plan. So if you do waive health insurance coverage, if you do waive health insurance coverage, and you want the dental plan, then you will give me the enrollment form for health insurance. I said, you've waived that and you're gonna complete the dental plan. So starting in that section A, you would check that you're a new hire, fill in the part B, your, your demographic information, then jump down to part C. The coverage that's offered is the Delta Dental PPO plus Premier. That may already be checked, but it's, if it's not checked on your form, that is um, the one box you wanna check. Um, the high-low option, you don't have to worry about that. We don't have a high-low option. And then, of course, you're going to say the type of coverage, what tier you want, employee, employee plus spouse, employee, child, and so on. Part D, we do not offer the vision portion from Delta Dental. So that's, we've, we've X through that. And then, of course, um, if there's anybody being covered other than yourself in Part E, you want to write in those person's names. And then on the back page, I've had a lot of people skip this. Please, please, please sign and date the back side of the form. Sign and date. I have to send it back to you if you don't. And that's going to delay me getting it into Delta Dental for your coverage to start. So please, please, please sign the form. Sign and date. Okay. So that's everything about health insurance. Moving on to our flexible spending account. So we do offer flexible spending through Flexible Benefits Administrators. They are the third-party administrator that handles it on our behalf, they handle it on our behalf. The medical spending or health spending account and the dependent care. You can see the maximums there, 2750 for medical, 5000 for dependent care, and that has stayed the same for the 2021 calendar year. The flexible spending, the money, um, if you choose to participate in that, I believe that was the, maybe the blue um, packet or maybe it's purple in your packet. Um, and the enrollment forms are included in that. With the flexible spending, it is a use it or lose it. October 1 through September 30th is the plan year. However, we do have a 90 day runoff. So you really have until like December 15th to spend your monies. It is pre-tax dollars. So it does help you on your taxes. It's never taxed. You can use it, obviously the medical for medical and the de dependent care for dependent care expenses. The medical is pre-funded. So um, the money, that means the money is available to you, whatever amount that you decide right up front. And then you, of course, you will reimburse your account as you go on. The dependent care is not pre-funded, meaning you can only get out what you have put in. So keep that in mind. And again, 
if you don't spend the money um, during the, the plan year or during that runoff period, you will lose it, you will not get it back. The flip side of that, or a very similar plan actually, is the health spending account. That's through health equity. They are the third party administrator for that plan. And that health, say, health spending account goes with the high deductible plan. You only get the HSA if you sign up for the health, uh, the high deductible plan. Uh, for the high deductible, for the health spending account, both employer and employee contributions go in. So WJCC does make a contribution to the health savings account, but not to the flexible spending account, okay? And on your health rate sheet, you will see the amounts that WJCC contributes. The health spending account, the HSA, is yours forever and ever on men. So there is no time period by which you have to spend the money. Um, even if you leave WJCC, um, the money goes with you. And it is to be used for medical expenses only. You can get it also a debit card to be used with the health savings account. But you can also get one with the flexible spending account to be used. Always keep your receipts for both because the companies may request or require to see those receipts to ensure that they are indeed a medical expense. Even if it seems like it's evident that it is, the obvious that it is, if they request or require the receipt, you are required to provide it. So that concludes our session on health insurance, dental flexible spending, and the high, and the high deductible plan or the health savings account. At this time, I would like to move into the Virginia, the Virginia Retirement System. Again, you are a member of the Virginia Retirement System automatically. You cannot opt out if you are contracted to work at least 30 hours a week, okay? There are three plans with the Virginia Retirement System, plan one, plan two, and hybrid. So when you're talking to your friends or your colleagues and they're talking about what's in their plan, they might not be in the same plan as you. So you wanna be sure that you are talking apples to apples and not oranges to apples. So plan two members are those members who were hired into a VRS covered position before July 1 of 2020. So it doesn't necessarily mean WJCC, maybe you're working at another school division in the state, maybe you were working for the state of Virginia, maybe you're working for a college, a state college. So if you were, um, a member, a hire before July 1 of 2010, and you did not take a refund, then you are plan one. You're plan two if you were hired after July 1 of 2010, but before January 1 of 2014, then you are a plan two member. And you are a VRS hybrid member if you are hired in a VRS cover position after January 1 of 2014. The VRS website is listed there, www.varetire.org. I encourage you to go to that site, peruse around, look at information regarding to, regard to your plan and uh, learn more about it. And they have the handbooks online for you to look at. Um, and I encourage you to do that. So the plan one and plan two members, you have a defined, excuse me, defined benefit contribution and that money or those monies are managed by VRS. And I'm a visual learner, so I have my red and green buckets to, to, so that we can talk um, about the two plans or the three plans and you can follow me. So the, the DB, defined benefit in the red bucket, plan one and plan two members, that's the only bucket we have. We contribute to it, our employer contributes, contributes to it. Hybrid members, you have a combination of a defined benefit contribution and a defined contribution, okay? Defined benefit and defined contribution. So you have two buckets. You have a DB and a DC. The defined benefit portion is managed by VRS. The defined contribution portion is managed by you. Don't get nervous if you're not into managing um, funds. The default is the company that handles it for VRS. The, type, the name of the company is ICMARC. It's a bunch of letters and that's their name, I-M-A-I-C-M-A-R-C. -I um, they manage your funds for you. So the, there are three paths under the defined contribution. I manage it myself, you manage it on my behalf or help me manage it. So the default is that they're gonna manage it for you until they hear from you how you want to, maybe if you wanna talk about how you want your monies to be invested and they will help you with that or they will do it for you. For the DB portion, 
Plan one and plan two members contribute 5% of their credible compensation to your retirement each month. You'll see that on your pay stub. That's required. You can't change it. You can't up it. You can't lower it. It's 5%. And then WJCC makes a contribution as well. For hybrid members, um, you contribute 4% of your credit comp credible compensation to the DP DB portion. And then WJCC makes a contribution as well. Now the DC portion hybrid members, so you can, your other 1%, so you're still doing 5%. So 1% of your credible compensation is going into the green bucket. And then WJCC is matching that 1% dollar for dollar, okay? However, you have another option, hybrid members. You can contribute an additional 4% voluntarily towards your retirement. And I'm gonna show you a screen a little later about why that might be a good idea to do that if you can afford to do it. You don't have to do the whole 4% at once. You can do it in half percent increments and you can do it quarterly. So if you want to um, up your voluntary from zero to four or zero to two, or from two to four, if you already contributed, then you can do that and it will become effective the first of the following quarter. So currently, um, this, today is October 28th. Um, so we're in the final quarter of the year. So if you were to make a change to your voluntary contributions and you want to contribute the full 4% or somewhere in between zero and 4%, then you would make that known and then that would become effective in January. Um, I oftentimes get calls from people in November. They want to change that voluntary contribution for December so that they can get more money in their December check or they wanted to call me in October so they can get more money in their December check and it doesn't work that way. You have to do it during the quarter. It becomes effective the first of the following quarter. So keep that in mind. So new employees, um, VRS does have the sites you can go to and you can preset. Um, they tell me it works. I'm not a hybrid member. I have not done this, but um, other hybrid members have told me that they have gone in and been able to preset their voluntary contribution amount to that between zero and 4%. If you have issues with that, please contact VRS directly. Unfortunately, I cannot help you or um, ICMARC um, and they should be able to help you. If you need that number, I can give you the phone number. So this is just a screen showing the side by side of the plans. It shows the membership when you can become a member, your contributions amount that we talked about with your credible compensation and your vesting. So vesting simply means the minimum length of time of service or part time you have to be in the program in order to be eligible for retirement benefit. And you can see on the screen what the vesting schedule is for the three plans. So on this screen is where I want you to see why um, hybrid members is important to um, contribute that additional 4% if you can. So in the bottom of the screen, you see the service retirement multiplier that 1%, 1.6, 1.6 and 1% 6, 1 and 1, and 1 for hybrid members. When you get ready to retire, there's a formula that VRS will use. And that formula is your average final compensation times a multiplier. The multiplier is set by the General Assembly, not by VRS and not by your school division. Um, it is set by the General Assembly, by the legislators. So that's the part of the uh, formula. Times your years of service, divide that by 12. And that'll give you your estimated monthly benefit in retirement. If you look across the screen, you'll see for plan one uh, member, if every, all things being equal, the average final compensation for all three plan members and the years of service for all three plan members being 30, the only difference is that multiplier. And you can see the estimated compensation at 2125 for plan one, 206250 for plan two and 1200 for hybrid. And this is for hybrid members. And this is based on the DB, the red bucket money only. So how are you gonna make up the difference hybrid members? It's in that green bucket. So if you wanna contribute more there, if you can, okay? Also, um, you don't have to do the calculation manually. You need to uh, go online to the v uh, VRS website, the www.varetire.org that I mentioned earlier. Uh, click on my VRS, that's a portal where you can actually see your VRS account. Create that, set up your username and password, and then you they will do this uh, these calculations for retirement for you automatically. But you have to have been in for a while to have some data for them to work with. Okay, 
Life insurance. So all VRS members have life insurance. Basic life insurance, WJCC pays for on your behalf. Um, it's your. It's based on your salary. Pardon me. Take a sip of water. It's based on your salary, rounded up to the nearest thousand, and then doubled. That's the value of your life insurance. You uh, you also have the option to purchase optional, additional optional life insurance at the rate of one, two, three, or four times your salary. That is at the cost of the employee. In your packet is the booklet that I refer to to um, sign up for or enroll in the optional life. As a new employee, if you do it within the first 31 days of hire, there's guarantee issue up to option four. Um, and if you want to do it, if you want to enroll a spouse or a child, have them have coverage, it's guarantee issue for the spouse through option one. There's also an insurability form that would need to be evidence of insurability form that would need to be completed. All of that is in that booklet that I showed you that's in your packet. OK, and of course, you want to complete the beneficiary forms that um, I referenced in the packet as well. If you do not complete the beneficiary forms, the um, VRS and something happens to you, VRS will go by what's called legal order of precedence to determine who the beneficiaries are. Legal order of precedence is a law. And if you don't have a form on file for them to follow, they will go by that. And the law states, I will go to a spouse first. If there is no spouse, then to your children or to descendants of those children. If no children and no spouse, to a parent um, equally or surviving parent. If no parents, no children, and no spouse, then it's going to go to an executor of your estate. If there is no exec executor or administrator of your estate, if there's no parents, and if there are no children or a spouse, then it will go to the next of kin um, as determined by the state of by state law where you reside when you pass away. So that's legal order precedence. That's explained in that first beneficiary form I showed you um, in the instruction section. So complete your beneficiary forms, send those in to me and I'll mail them in for you. I do not keep copies of the beneficiary forms. If you wanna keep copies, make sure you do that for your records. We do not keep copies as instructed by VRS. So hybrid members, you have um, disability as a part of your VRS plan. Plan one and plan two members, you do not, okay? I'm a plan one member, I do not. So the Virginia Local Disability Program is administered by the REED group. Um, and in your package, you have two sheets, one as a highlights for long-term disability and one as highlights for short-term disability and contact information for the REED group. For short-term disability hybrid members, you had to have been in for a year before you can access short-term disability. If something happens and it's determined that you're going to be on long-term disability, then we would deal with that um, with the REED group. But again, that's hybrid members only. Long-term care is different than long-term disability. So long-term disability is what pays you. You get paid for a percentage of your a percentage of your pay each month that's approved through the Reed Group. Long-term care is, is money to cover the cost of taking care of you if you have to convalesce. So that would be for long-term care if you had to go into a facility to rehabilitate for something. And then that, that's what long-term care coverage is for. We do not offer a payroll deduction for that, okay? We do not. You would work with Genworth directly and there should be information in your packet about that, about long-term care. Okay, and you pay them directly. So just a summary of where everything we've talked about regarding VRS, plan one and plan two, you have a defined benefit. You contribute 5% of your comp credible compensation. WJCC can, makes a contribution as well. You have basic life insurance that's paid for by WJCC and you also have the health insurance credit. I didn't talk about that because we usually don't talk about that until retirement, but the health insurance credit is an amount that's added to your monthly benefit upon your retirement if you retire from WJCC because WJCC is contributing into that account for you. There's a rate set by the General Assembly again for that, and that's added to your monthly benefit, and it's not taxed. Um, so your other options, plan one and plan two, is you can purchase additional optional life or long-term care insurance. Hybrid members, you have a defined benefit and a defined contribution. You see the contribution amounts, percentages there. You also have basic life, you have VLDP, um, which is a long-term disability, which includes long-term care, by the way. And also you have the health insurance credit and the options of purchasing additional life insurance um, or contributing to voluntarily an additional 4% to your defined contribution account. 
other potential um, benefits that you could consider. We are, have a sick leave bank. And I remember I referenced in your form, sick leave bank. Hybrid members, you can become a member of the sick leave bank if you choose to fill out that form that's in your packet and turn it in. However, you can only be a member for 12 months until you're eligible for short-term disability and then you come out of the bank. You become a member of the bank by donating one day and you don't get that day back, hybrid members when you come out and you don't get that day back if you leave the division. So plan one and plan two members, you're in, you stay in if you choose to participate. What the sick leave bank does is if you uh, have to be out for a long period of time due to an illness for yourself, um, then, and you run out of leave, you have to exhaust all of your, all of your leave. There's a 30 day waiting period. Um, and then you can ex, um, access up to 45 additional days of leave. So there's that 30 day waiting period. Then we have something called sick leave donations. There is no particular form for that right now. That's on the spot. If you are out for a long period of time, you run out of leave, you're not a member of the bank, or you're in that 30 day waiting period for the bank, you can require, uh, request that your supervisor solicit sick leave donations. The, the thing with that is you don't know who might donate any days to you um, or, they may, or you may get a plethora of days. So you just, you don't know, that's, that's the unknown there. But that is available to employees. We also have Mass Mutual, where um, that is a third party provider for, for our 403B and 457. You can make pre-tax contributions to um, those plans. Um, and it's for us to save for retirement as well. And I have booklets. If you would want, like one, please send me an email and I'll be happy to put one in the pony to you. And we offer legal resources. Legal resources is at the rate of $17 a month. That is a payroll deduction. Um, Mass Mutual is also a payroll deduction. Pre-tax legal resources is not pre-tax. And we also offer AFLAC. AFLAC um, services or policies include cancer policies, hospitalization policies, um, injury policies and AFLAC pays you. It is not insurance. It is not health insurance. It's insurance that pays you if you are out of work. So, so like a, they also have short and long-term disability or short-term disability, I'm certain. There are representatives that we deal with for AFLAC, Ron and Britta Martin. If you need their contact information and you want more information, I can send you the packet and send you their name and number. And then they will tell you the cost. I don't have the cost for the AFLAC, I'm sorry. That is the end of the presentation. Um, I don't know if I still have uh, Catherine with me, but if so, if there are any questions, I will take them at this time. Otherwise, you see there my email address. My name is Lori Ann Smith. Please do not send an email to Lorraine. She does not exist in this school division. Lori Ann, Lorraine Smith does not. Um, so if you send it to Lorraine.Smith, she will not get it. But if you do send me an email at Lori Ann, Dot Smith at wjccschools.org. I'll be happy to respond as soon as I can. And then of course my number is there on the screen. Thank you for joining and thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, again, send me an email or, or give me a call and I'll be happy to answer. Don't forget to, to complete your enrollment form. You have 30 days from your date of hire. I needed the TLC enrollment form, whether you take insurance or not um, is within that 30 day period. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to end the recording.